بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم نائن سیون ڈبل زیرو جون ٹوینٹی تھری پیپر فور تھری دس از دا تھرڈ ویڈیو وچ کنٹینز دا لاسٹ تھری کوشچنز اسٹارٹنگ ود کوشچن نمبر ایٹ فگر ایٹ پوائنٹ ون از اے ڈائگرام آف اے کلورو پلاسٹ یوزنگ دا لیٹرس کے ٹو این کمپلیٹ ٹیبل ایٹ پوائنٹ ون ایچ لیٹر مے بی یوزڈ ونس مور دین ونس اور ناٹ ایٹ آل سو ہائی کانسنٹریشن آف پروٹونس لوکیشن آف فوٹو سنتھیٹک پگمنٹ سائٹ آف لائٹ انڈیپینڈنٹ اسٹیج اینڈ سائٹ آف لائٹ ڈیپینڈنٹ اسٹیج سو بیسکلی high concentration of protons is going to be in m why is it going to be in m you've got to realize what is m you see the thylakoid membranes the protons are pumped into the thylakoid space and then they will flow out of the atp synthase uh, i just revise this with you location of photosynthetic pigments is l or you could have said n and then as the site of the light independent stage is k Site of the light in this is a stroma, so that is K, and then site of the light dependent stage is you could have said L or you could have said N. Right? So you got the four marks. Then it says chlorophyll uh, A is the main photosynthetic pigment in plants. Describe the role of other photosynthetic pigments found in plant chloroplast, and that is four marks. So chlorophyll A is the main photosynthetic, which is the primary pigment and then of course what are the other ones now the any 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 other you named chlorophyll b carotene or xanthophyll you got a mark for that acts as an accessory pigment absorbs light passes energy on to chlorophyll a or the primary pigment and these absorb different wavelengths of light which are not absorbed by chlorophyll a so the important point is how you worded this is you see chlorophyll b carotene xanthophyll those are the name of the other or the accessory pigments and then they act as accessory pigments absorb light or photons then they pass on the energy to chlorophyll a you see you write pass on the light to chlorophyll a. that's the wrong thing it's light energy so pass on the energy to chlorophyll a and of course these accessory pigments absorb different wavelengths of light which are not absorbed by chlorophyll a So unless you know the knew this whole thing you would not be able to do it and I always say is when you revise a chapter please do all the questions you must buy the topicals and you must do all the latest questions on these uh, on the last 3 uh, 4 years so that you can then know which sort of question these have come repeatedly in many many papers Then coming to part C the absorption of different wavelengths of light by chloroplast pigments can be represented by an absorption spectrum figure 8.2 is an absorption spectrum of an extract of chloroplast pigments and an uh, absorption spectrum of whole chloroplast so absorption spectrum of extracts of chloroplast pigments and and the absorption spectrum of whole chloroplast so this is the one which is of the whole chloroplast which i'm going to color in red right and the other one is pigment extract which i will use a green color and then you can see this and so the sort of the same peaks and troughs with reference to figure 8.2 this is the figure 8.2 describe the difference between the two spectra and suggest explanations for the differences so the whole chloroplast and the pigment extract so the whole chloroplast so absorption higher for whole chloroplast throughout you can see that this one is higher higher for all the chloroplast so this is the higher one it, it never never does it sort of dip less than that so absorption higher for chloroplast throughout then you could give me a comparative data say at 500 you could give me the values so 500 will be 9.2 for the whole here i 9.2 for the whole chloroplast is somewhere here 500 is 9.2 for the whole chloroplast and and 6.4 for the extracted pigments and you can just draw a line on that and see where it cuts this and where it, so uh, this is what you had to do like this sorry i didn't get it right at the beginning so uh then uh, because pigments are arranged for better absorption in chloroplast because the thylakoid membranes are stacked and of course chloroplast contain more pigments 
the extraction as pigment extracted would be of course again not the, the all of the pigments so then this would be the explanation for it and the reference to figure 8.2 describe the differences between the two species uh, between the two spectra and suggest explanations for the difference as it is it's getting 12 30 so i think maybe i'm getting a bit sleepy sorry for the mistakes so basically absorption higher for whole chloroplast and uh, comparative data 500 nanometer wavelength uh, whole 9.2 au and um, 6.4 au and here in the 600 nanometer it was 6.65 au and you know, there's a whole table in the mark scheme and you do have a look at it and see how they have done it so that you can learn from it and the reasons why they give uh, it says suggest explanations pigments arranged on thylakoids for better absorption in the whole chloroplast and chloroplast contain more pigments you've only extracted a few pigments so that would not contain all the pigments so that completes this question now let's go on to question number 9 dopamine is a neurotransmitter released in some synapses in the brain the release and action of dopamine is similar to that of acetylcholine figure 9.1 is a diagram of a brain synapse when dopamine is the neurotransmitter dopamine vesicle presynaptic membrane postsynaptic membrane describe how the release of dopamine from the presynaptic neuron can lead to an action potential in the postsynaptic neuron very simple dopamine diffuses across the synaptic cleft binds to receptor on postsynaptic membrane sodium channels open depolarization of postsynaptic membrane if the threshold is crossed an impulse will be generated in brain cells the amino acid tyrosine is changed into dopa and then is converted to dopamine name another compound in the body produced from dopa that was dopaquinone or even melanin was allowed so that was dopaquinone or you could have said melanin so dopaquinone so it's d o p a q u i n o n e dopaquinone or you could have said melanin so diffuses across synaptic cleft binds to receptor on post synaptic membrane the sodium channels open depolarization of post synaptic membrane if enough sodium channels open and a threshold is crossed only then an impulse will be generated in the post synaptic cell or the post synaptic neuron and then we've done this now we come on to the next part of the question b part of the question in some brain synapses the neurotransmitter gamma amino butyric acid gaba is released this results in influx of chloride ions into the post synaptic neuron suggest and explain whether an action potential would be generated in the post synaptic neuron of gaba is released into a brain synapse well chlorium well chloride influx makes the uh, makes the post synaptic neuron more negative so there will be hyperpolarization which means it will remain polarized uh, less likely to reach the threshold so depolarization of uh, no depolarization of the post synaptic membrane and so no action potential so you can see how the mark scheme shows you that that chloride influx makes it more negative so from minus 70 it'll go to minus 90 now this is called hyperpolarization so less likely to reach the threshold now you need a very very strong stimulus so no depolarization of the post synaptic membrane so no action potential will be you see when it becomes hyperpolarized then you need a very strong uh, stimulus to really make it reach the threshold so no depolarization because not enough sodium ions will enter so less likely to reach the threshold now coming to the last question the moose uh, alcus alcus is a large member of the deer family it lives in temperate forest in north america and northern europe where snow is present for large parts of the year figure 10.1 shows an adult male moose feeding in a lake The moose feeds on a plant in the lake called water milfoil. 
here you file them aquaticum the moose and the water milfoil belong to the domain eukarya which includes the kingdoms animalia and plantae describe the main difference between the kingdom animalia and the kingdom plantae well that's very simple animals no cell walls plant have cell walls no chlorophyll chlorophyll present in plants then heterotrophs animals are all heterotrophs plants are autotrophs so they can photosynthesize animals have glycogen plants have starch animals have a nervous system plants do not have a nervous system animals can move from place to place plants are unable to move from place to place and in animals there is no permanent central vacuole in plants there is a large central permanent vacuole so very simple points i'm sure you could have all given me all these so whenever such a question is given you can always draw a line in the center and write animalia plantae or something like that whatever is being asked to be compared so the main differences between them so no cell wall cell wall no chlorophyll chlorophyll heterotroph autotroph glycogen is the food reserve starch is the main storage molecule nervous system no nervous system move from place to place do not move and there is a large central vacuole there is no central vacuole central vacuole is only present in plants there is no central vacuole in animals then coming to the next part of the question we have again some maths measurements of the surface temperature of land and oceans can be taken from locations around the world the mean global surface temperature for land and ocean combined can be calculated for a fixed time period scientists calculated the mean global temperature for the 20th century the mean global temperature for each decade 10 years from 1880 to 2020 the mean temperature for each decade was compared to the mean for the 20th century for each decade the difference in temperature was calculated the calculated differences are shown in figure 10.2 that's a very very complex graph calculated temperature difference plus 2 plus 3 0 negative 1 negative 2 mean for the 20th century was this and so in 1880 you can see it is calculated temperature difference was first in 1880 minus 0.1 then minus 0.3 something then in 1900 it was minus between 0.2 and 0.1 1910 again it has dipped and then after 1920 it started to rise 1930s again risen and 1940 it has gone above the 20th century and then after 1940 it has remained above the mean for the 20th century and by 2020 oh wow we got it to plus 0.85 so it has really increased a lot and you can see how this is also going to affect everything so calculate the rate of increase in temperature per decade between 1980 and 2020 per decade show your working and write your answer to two decimal places that's a little difficult i'm sure you're going to find it a little difficult but i'm sure you can do it so calculate the rate of freeze between 1980 and 2020 show your working write your answer to two decimal places Now you have to remember it is 1980 to 2020, so there are four decades because it said per decade. So 1980 to 1990 would be one decade, 1990 to 2000 would be the second decade, 2000 2010 third, and 2010 to 20 20 would be the fourth decade. Now let's look at 1980. What was the value? 1980 here now uh, I can just show it to you 1980 it was 0.28 and 0.86 for 2020 so what will be the working 0.86 minus 0.28 divided by four decades or you can say what was this 0.58 divided by four. Now this comes to 0.15 degrees Celsius per decade. 0.15. So I've shown you this here. You can have a look at it here again. The 1980 and then 2020. You have to see it. This is 1980 and this is 2020. So you have to just read off this graph. You had to do. Uh, 
0.86 minus 0.28 and divided by 4 because we're talking about four decades and you got 0.15 degrees Celsius. Uh, this is the rate of increase in temperature. Okay, I hope everybody's got this. Moose populations have decreased in North America since 1980. Suggest and explain reasons for the decrease in moose population. They told you something in this climate change, less food, less uh, snow cover, so more predation, more hunting, increased competition, loss of habitat and disease. The loss of habitat and disease you can write in every, and less food you can write in every question which uh, covers this topic. So climate change, or you could describe the climate change as increasing temperatures, so more global warming or increased temperature of the habitat, less food available, less snow, so more predation, more hunting, uh, increased competition for food and for mate, and loss of habitat, which could be because of deforestation. So deforestation would result in a loss of habitat. And then, of course, there could be a new disease uh, which results in uh, the moose populations greatly decreasing. And these new diseases can just come up anywhere, just like we had the COVID and that resulted in chaos. So new disease could result in the uh, decrease in the moose populations. So these are the main points which you write for nearly every question which they ask you on this chapter. Uh, thank you. This completes paper 4.3 and uh, inshallah we should be soon doing covering the paper 5 so that you're all ready to take the paper 5. Please go through these latest papers because they give you a very good idea of how to attempt the papers and how the questions which are going to come in the November exam that also this, these papers help you a lot in that. Thank you very much.